Welcome to my channel everybody. This is Sheila from Suncoast Creations by Sheila. Today we are going to be making some coasters with a coastal or seascape background, if you will, with waves. So this is going to be done in parts um, as you have to let the um, molds set a little bit as you're adding pieces to it. So we'll go through that step by step. Today I am using um, a an epoxy resin by Let's Resin. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, big container. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix that up here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make about four ounces to start. Again, this is gonna come in phases, so I'll be adding um, extra resin as we go along. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour two ounces. And actually, I wanna start with my B today first. So let's go ahead. and pour the B. We'll get this out of the way here. Big jugs, big, big, big jugs. And we're gonna start out, this is this is measured by volume, so we're gonna use a measuring cup, and we're just gonna to go to the, to the two, ounce, uh, two ounce line there. Some you measure by weight, which means you put it on a scale and you weigh it that way. We are not gonna do that today. We're just gonna go and do this by volume in a very well ventilated area. I'm gonna wipe off the resin that I just got down the side of that because I don't like to touch this later and have my hands be all sticky. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that I don't like sticky and sticky resin is very annoying. So I like to have everything kept nice and clean. And I'm gonna just hit this with a spritz of alcohol. Yeah, it might take me a little bit longer to work through some of this stuff, but at the end of the day, um, it just pays off to keep things nice and clean. And then once I'm done with that part B, I'm gonna set it away back in the box. And I'll go ahead and I'll move to the, the part A and we'll get that poured in. So we'll get another two ounces in here. And I wanna make sure that I have that at two ounces. You want your work surface to be clean and free of lint and dust. And if you have a cat like me, cat hair, I'm sure if you've listened to my other videos, you heard Mr. Brody in the background contributing to the conversation. Very unwanted conversation from him. But anyway, or unwanted participation. But it is what it is. All right, so we have the, the A poured into the B. I got the dropsies today. And I'm gonna put the lid back on this. And we're gonna put this away. Again, I'm working in a well ventilated area. This is not, this is a very low um, odor resin, so it doesn't emit a lot of um, a lot of bad smells, but at the end of the day, you should wear a respirator when you're working with this, but I am in a well-ventilated room. So now I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and stir this, and I'm gonna stir very slowly, moving from inside, outside in, inside out, around, getting the edges, just going very slowly. I'm not going to pull my stir stick up out of the resin, that just adds bubbles. I will fast forward through this so you don't have to sit and watch me mix this, but this is step one. Actually, step one is preparing your area. So you'll, you'll see that I have all of my supplies around me. I have my um, colors that I'm gonna be using today, my mica powder from Let's Resin. I've got my molds. I've got the shells picked out I'm going to use. I have some other tools off to the side. I've got my alcohol. I've got my handy dandy shop towels, which I always have spritzed with a little bit of alcohol so I can keep my hands and my work surface clean. I, again, I hate sticky. And it's not good having resin on your body either. So you wanna make sure that you keep um, your work area as clean as you can. 
Epoxy resin can cause irritation to your skin and your eyes. So you wanna make sure you're doing your best to keep it off of your skin. Don't use alcohol to remove it from your skin. Use soap and water, and if that doesn't work, um, there are a lot of really good products out there from the various companies that you can buy to, um, to get the resin off of your hands and your other body parts. You don't want to uh, end up with contact dermatitis. So I'm just going around the sides very slowly. You notice I don't have a fancy mixer. So as a beginner, if you don't know if you're gonna like this or if you're gonna even you know stick with it, you don't need fancy. Um, this is a stirring stick that came with a, another um, kit, a resin kit by Nick Pro. When you're buying your kits, I recommend that you take a look at what is included in them. So let's go ahead, I'll stop talking and we can speed up through this video. Okay, it's been five minutes, so I'm gonna stop stirring. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of um, glitter just to give these a little extra sparkle. Just a little tap, five taps. How much you use is really up to you. You have to be careful with resin though. Um, you, can, you really can't add or should not add more than 5% um, to 6% colorant or glitter or other objects to your resin. All right, we're gonna let this set aside for a couple minutes. Um, my work surface is nice and level and um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my coasters ready here. And I can see there's a little bit of, a little bit of um, stuff in here. These are brand new from Let's Resin. And you can get some really nice kits as a beginner from Let's Resin. It has everything you need in it to get started. Just give these a little one over. This is a five coaster set. And then it also has a um, <gasps> ah, crisis averted there, which is why you always keep your stuff away. Um, it's got a nice little handy dandy um, holder, which we'll do a little s separately. Okay. Now that I have had a heart attack. Okay, these are nice and clean. Hmm. Uh, that's why being organized is really important. Okay, I'm just going to take, I did clean these out already, but I can still see some, some stuff in them. So I'll just wipe these out a little bit again. This will save you a lot because you don't want extra little floaters in your in your resin. Okay, um, so I'm going to be working with um, a few different colors today. Um, I'm going to start uh, with a dark blue, which is going to be the ocean part of my coasters, and then I'm going to combine this spring green with um, the sky blue to get that oceany turquoise color that we see like we see in the Caribbean and then I'm going to add a little bit of the seashell color to um, the sand when I get ready to mix the sand here so I'm going to go ahead and we'll get started so I'm going to start with my blue my dark blue and I'm going to pour because I have five of these, I'm gonna pour this about half full. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and pour all of these and get that out of the way. So again, I've got five coasters, so I wanna make sure I have enough colors so that I don't have to go back and remix. But you know what, sometimes that happens too. We learn as we go. Okay. 
So let's start with our ocean blue. And normally I would use this little spoon for these things. By the way, buy gloves that fit you. It's a pain when they don't fit you. Um, this has a nice little opening at the top, so I'm not going to worry too much about um, um, it pouring out in droves. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle a little bit. If I get too much, I'll just add a little bit more um, of the... Let me shake this up a little bit here. I'll just add a little bit more uh, resin to it. And you have to play around with this a little bit until you get the actual color that you want. So we'll add that. And I'm gonna take popsicle stick and I'm just gonna stir this up. And I can see right off the bat, I want this to be a little bit darker. Mica powders have this really pretty pearlescent color to them. So I want this to be just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue. Just a little. All right, that should do it. I'm going to set this off to the side and out of the way so I don't accidentally mix it in with my other colors. I have a feeling this is not going to be enough to go across five coasters. I'm going to add, no, you know what, let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. All right, so I'm gonna put the blue aside. And now let's go ahead with our sky blue and our spring green mixture. Again. So I have used these colors before, and I kind of have an idea how they're already gonna, how they're gonna look. So you kind of want that nice transition from that dark ocean blue to this pretty turquoise. You want to make sure that you're getting all the powder mixed in. You don't want powder clumps in your coasters. And I don't worry about the bubbles too much right here. Number one, it's the ocean. The ocean has bubbles. But number two, I'm going to hit this with my lighter. And I think I want that to be just a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more sky blue, just a little. Nice thing is, as I said, if you don't get it the way you like it the first time, you can just kind of keep adding till you get it where you want it. Oh, I think that's gonna be perfect. Nice and shiny. And you really don't have to add glitter to these as well if you really don't want to. Okay, so we're gonna wipe this off. You can use a popsicle stick. Um, I have some other little handy dandy tools that I like to use, but you know, you wanna save money. Popsicle sticks are cheap. Again, we're just starting out. We wanna make sure that we are um, that we are not wasting money on things that we're not ever going to use. Wipe my hands off a little bit there. I have a little bit of working time with this resin, so I'm not in a great big hurry to get to get moving here. Now with the sand, normally I would use a a spoon or a scoop as well, but I don't know where my little scoop is, so I'm just going to pour some in here. 
I'm not worried about if I put too much in here, actually, because I really want this to be a thicker consistency. And I'm gonna put a little dab of this um, seashell white in there, just to kind of give that beach a little bit of a, of a glow. So just a little, not a lot. It'll also make that white Naples sand look a little bit more realistic too. We have the most beautiful beaches in the United States in Naples, Florida, if you've never been. All right, let's just set this aside and mix this up and see what we've got here. Again, I wanna get this to a nice thick consistency. up putting a little more sand in there you want it to be kind of like oatmeal is what a lot of people say and I'm hoping this is enough oh, that's gonna be good to cover all five of these mixing sand more sand that's an easy thing to do the other nice thing about doing coastal coasters is that no two are gonna come out the same. They just don't. They'll be close, the coloring will be close. But each one is unique in its own way. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take this, that's kind of where I want it, and I'm gonna start spreading it. Pull this over here so you can see these a little better. Move stuff out of the way so I don't spill it near accident like we had before. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna spread these along the bottom. And we're not worried about perfection here. We'll come back and we'll I'm definitely going to have to mix more sand, I can see right off the bat. Now let's go ahead and put this in here. That is a pretty thick consistency there, which is okay. All right, let's add a little bit more. Let's make a little bit more sand here. My resin's not heating, heating, heating just yet, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, roughly, I think about 60 minutes with that, so. I'm gonna get this nice and thick. And hopefully this will do it this time. As your resin starts to heat in the cup, you'll know how much work time you have. And a spoon would be so much better. I wouldn't be getting this all over my hands right at the moment. I'll change that globe out. I'll change them both out. Also, the larger volume of resin you pour, the quicker it's going to cure. You don't want it to cure too quickly or what we call flash cure, because it'll get too thick. You can't use it, it'll be hot. Sometimes it gets so hot it can melt your cup. Not desirable at all. It's a little bit thinner than that first pour. That's okay, we're gonna be good. 
one thing I've learned and I'm still learning is leave it alone. So let's put a little bit of our white in here, seashell white. See, and that's what us rookies do. We don't mix enough the first time out, but in my defense, these are new molds. And I know they're about an ounce total each and I'm not mixing a whole ounce today. So, I mean, uh, I'm, not mi I'm not filling the whole mold today, so I don't really need the full amount. Oh, that's good. It's okay if you're a little sloppy. Now there are different techniques for doing this. So you're gonna have to find out which works best for you. And I've, I've seen this process done several ways. I'm just gonna move this a little bit. That's a lot of beach. That's okay. All right, well now we're gonna get this out of our way here. I am back and I have waited uh, 24 hours actually. I've mixed my resin, about four ounces here. I'm gonna pour it into each of the molds here um, along the beach line to the back. And I'm gonna use uh, a ocean white by just resin. So I'm gonna take and pour some of the uh, resin into the cup. And then I will add my ocean white by Let's Resin into the the mixture. And I'm going to put about a, not quite an ounce in the cup. I need to make sure I save enough for my molds. So let's go ahead and put the Ocean White in. And you don't want to get too much of the Ocean White paste in the resin. Um, if it's too thick, you won't get nice cells and it'll be difficult to blow out the waves. I probably should be putting this on a popsicle stick and doing it that way, but we'll see. We'll see what we get. Again, this is a learning experiment here. So first time using this ocean white resin with, uh, with weight to make waves. So let's see how it turns out here. I always have my handy dandy alcohol trying to keep my surfaces clean and free of resin. I'm just going to give this a stir with my popsicle stick. Make sure it's all mixed in. Not worried about bubbles in this part because I'm going to be blowing it with a heat gun, which is going to take any bubbles out of the, out of the mixture. So just give this a few swirls. I'm looking at the consistency. I want to make sure that it is the proper consistency, not too thick and not too thin. Uh, not quite sure. I'm going to add a little bit more. Probably shouldn't. Um, remember I said earlier, you know, you just need to stop. We'll see. We'll see. 
So let's mix this in. And it might work. All right, so let's go ahead and take the, the resin that we've had sitting here now. It's been sitting for at least five minutes again so that some of the bubbles can come to the surface and not sit in the resin. I'm just going to pour some out into each of the molds here. And what I'm going to do is I'll be putting white over the top of this and blowing it out to get my beach waves. So I don't want the resin to come back over the beach sand if I can help it, because um, if that happens, then the waves are going to blow back over the um, over the sand and it'll cover up the sand. So I just want enough resin in each of these molds to come up to the beach line and then go out to the margins. All right, so I think that is good. And maybe I'll add a little bit more here. Apologies for the white bright light over the center coaster here. That's uh, part of my setup, recording setup here, and it's hard to not have that there. And I'll add a little to this one. And try to get this out of the way so I don't knock it over like I did almost at the beginning of the video. I'm just going to try to run this down a little bit down to the beach sand. Keep in mind that the bottom of these have been um, sitting for 24 hours, so they're pretty close to being set solid. If I were to take them out, they'd probably be soft and a little bendable right now, so we're just going to leave them in and we're going to... Uh, put the resin in um, and add the white to do our waves. Um, I have seen people demold at this point, um, put a latex uh, glue-like mixture on the back to keep the resin from running on the back and then doing the waves um, that way, freestanding on top of like a, a, a cup. I did not fill the molds full um, and what I'll have to do is come back tomorrow so it's actually going to be a third day and I will um, fill the entire mold with a top coat of resin and that should work out where I will not have to um, uh, go ahead and put um, a dome on the top. So again I'm just taking this resin to the margins here where I want the waves to start. And I'm doing this on each of the coasters. I make sure I get the edges and if there's any visible bubbles I see, I'm going to pop them at the same time. You'll notice I do have the coaster mold in the upper um, left-hand corner. I'm not going to basically finish that um, in this video, but I did pour some blue um, resin with the mica powder in it and put some starfish and some shells and let that set. And then I'm going to add um, a sand bottom to that just to, to, to fill that out. Um, I also have done another one that's just completely clear resin with seashells and some glitter, which is what I'll, I'll show you at the end here versus this one. Um, this one may not be done in time. So anyway, all right, let's go ahead and uh, see what we got here with our... white paste mixture here. Just gonna scrape off any extra off the sides here. Probably have a little more than I need here, but that's okay. And we've got this little wooden stick. I'm gonna put some on here and see how it lies. And ooh, it's a little thick this way, a little hard to do. Yeah, I'm not getting a good thin line with this. I could probably try pouring it out of the cup, but then the line might be too thick. And this would take me all day. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the popsicle stick here. 
let's see what we get with that. I mean, it is nice and, and runny. It is a, a thin consistency. It doesn't seem to be too thick, but I won't know for sure until I start blowing this out. And I'm just trying to get that right up along that clear resin line there. Come back over the top. I probably could have let the um, resin sit a little bit longer in the cup before decanting and pouring into the molds too. That would have made it a little bit thicker. But sometimes it's a little harder to blow your waves. So I've got my blower here, um, my heat gun, and I'm using that to blow out the waves. And I've muted the sound on that so you don't have to listen to that. And I probably should be coming down at a little bit more of a side angle, but where I'm working from, it's a little hard to a little hard to get the right angle. And I want the waves to look like they're kind of coming into the sand here. This heat gun does not have a low setting on it, so I probably should be using my other one because I can see that I'm blowing these waves out. It's a little bit too much, um, a little bit too much uh, air going on it. I'm going to try to keep that little metal stand at the bottom out of the resin. I always do something dumb like that. It happens. This is very hot, so the resin's going to get very hot, and that's going to facilitate it um, curing much more quickly, so you have to also be careful with this. And I'm just going to hit these up a little bit because I went a little too crazy on the top, and I pushed all of my, my uh, waves up to the top. This one looks probably okay. I should leave it alone, but, you know... As you've seen, I don't leave things alone. And I'm going to take just a little bit more, try to get this bottom a little better. Probably would be better to let this set and come back the next day and do a round two of the waves. But I really need to get these done. So let's hit this up with a little bit more. Um, yeah, let me touch this one up just a little bit here. Oh, I know I should leave this alone. And this is starting to get a little thicker too. So we'll see. Let's blow these out a little bit more. Again, I have to be you know, cognizant of the, the heat. I don't want to put too much heat on the resin that's sitting in there. I'm just going to blow this out. I should be using a better angle. I do have a heat gun that has a very narrow angle attachment to it. Um, but this was a new one, and I wanted to try this. Oh, I'm not getting good cells either. I'm not overly thrilled with this. But you know what? It is what it is. If I really didn't like it, I could come back and sand it out. But I think we're just going to... Leave it as it is. See how the resin comes back. If I get too much of the waves coming over the sand, I can pour more clear resin over that, and it would push the waves back out into that blue-green area. And as I keep moving this stuff around, I am pushing more and more of that you know, clear resin with the beach line back into my sand. So this is probably going to run back a little more than I want it to, but that's okay. So let's uh, put this away for now. And... Um, We'll come back and I will have decanted them already, or sorry, demolded them already, just to save you time and show you what the finished product is. Here's the finished product. The waves came out pretty good, not too bad, not a lot of cells, but overall I'm not unhappy with them. They're actually very pretty on the back. You could put a dark cover on the back to make them a little less transparent. Um, I'm not going to need to dome them. This was the clear um, coaster holder with the glitter. So all in all, I think they came out pretty well. Sorry about the camera work here. Not bad.
Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. As always, please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe. 